there's a very important detail about lefty guitars that no one talks about, but it can make or break a guitar. It's gonna take a minute to explain, but it's gonna be worth your time. You're about to see something really interesting because I'm about to show you something that I don't think anyone ever noticed. And the only reason I've noticed it is because I happen to be using a microscope uh, on, uh, <clears throat> on guitars. This customer bought a cheap uh, lefty guitar and uh, See, that's the thing with cheap guitars. Um, let me put it this way. There's plenty of opportunities for improvements. So if you want to make them work as they're supposed to work, you're going to be spending some serious money perfecting them, right? Because technicians don't come cheap and they shouldn't. Yeah, we got to make a living. Hence, the old Chinese proverb, if you don't want to spend a lot of money on the guitar, don't buy a cheap one. All right, so enough talking. Uh, so let's do some more talking at the shop. But what I do want to mention is this. Uh, it's something that affects the intonation of the guitar and also causes string buzz. Welcome back to Guitar Quackery. Now let's go. On the bench is a left-handed Squire Stratocaster that the customer wants him to convert to a right-handed guitar for right-handed play. Um, but he wants it to be a left-handed Strat because he's a Hendrix fan, so he wants the Hendrix experience, although he himself is right-handed. Um, it's a cheap guitar, so he wants to do a whole bunch of other mods at some later time. But one thing that he is uh, not able to do on his own is to do the work that needs to be done on the nut. Uh, so obviously when you uh, flip a guitar from lefty to righty or the other way around, um, these thick strings from, the, from what is now the bass side of the guitar will end up on what is now the treble side so they won't fit into these narrow string slots and these string slots are going to be too wide for these strings so the question now is um on a, a fender style uh, neck um can we just pull the nut out of the shelf and turn it around and place it back into the shelf and will that be okay and in general, the, the answer to that question should be no. Uh, it should be no if the knot was properly made to start with. Um, so let's talk about that. Um, these um, string slots sh should be filed um, very low so that when, when you uh, push the string against the second fret there's basically no no gap left between the first fret and the string uh, the other thing is then when it's filed correctly all of these string slots should be uh, sloped downwards because these strings are in fact uh, going in, in this direction towards the headstock. So if you flip the knot, the string slots are going to be pointing upwards, right? So you want to have a pressure point at the front of the knot and clearance at the back. So you can't just flip the knot around if the knot is correctly made to begin with. Um, what I discovered on this guitar is that this is actually not a left-handed knot. This is a right-handed knot that they just flipped around at the factory and installed it onto this left-handed guitar. And it doesn't work properly. So if I play the string, you can hear a sitar buzz. Okay. Mm. 
more so in this direction. Now, um, we're going to examine the nut through the microscope and see what is going on. So here we're looking at uh, the high E string slot. Uh, let's zoom in on it. And you can see that uh, the string wobbles at the front. So if I remove the string, you can clearly see that there's a witness point at the back end, but the string was not even touching the bottom of the nut at the front, which is why we hear that uh, sitar string buzz when we play the string, because it wobbles inside of the string slot and it keeps hitting the side of the string slot, probably on this side here. So that's that's the situation with the high E string. But now uh, let's move over to the B string and let's have a look at that string. Let's refocus and let's play that string. You can clearly see how it's moving inside and also the sound is not clean. You can hear a little bit of a uh, string buzz that sounds like a sitar. If we remove the string, we can see the same situation. We can see a witness point at the back end and we can clearly see that the string was not seated at the front, which is why it's buzzing inside of the nut. Let's put it back and let's look at the G string. Refocus. If I remove the string, you can clearly see that there's a witness point again at the back end and there's nothing at the front of the nut. The D string. The D string also left a witness point at the back end and we can see that it was not seated at the front. Now let's have a look at the A string. Uh, here I need to unwind the string first. But you can also clearly see that it's moving at the front. Let's unwind the string. And you can clearly see the witness point at the back end and nothing here at the front, right? Once again, that's because um, the string slot is sloped in the wrong direction. And finally, let's have a look at the low E string. Again, let's, uh, let's wiggle it a little bit. It wiggles. You can already see how it's anchored at the back. And if I remove the string, you can see the witness point at the back end. And you can see that the string was really not seated at the front at all. So this is clearly a right handed nut that was just flipped at the factory. It is a, a pre-fabricated nut. So this, this is just uh, injection molded. Um, but as such, um, it, it is just a blank. When you buy a pre-slotted nut, you're not supposed to just install it anyway. You're supposed to install it and then uh, file the string slots so that um, you minimize the height. Now the question is, since this nut was never filed, could we perhaps just take it out, flip it, and then make the necessary adjustments? Well, in, in theory we, we could, but I also don't like uh, this gap here on this side. Uh, so I don't really know what's going on. Uh, I have not removed the knot yet. 
And also, uh, this customer just wants me to put a bone nut in place. So this will also be an upgrade. Uh, it'll have a better nut. And hopefully, it'll be filed correctly. Uh, if the work will be done by a competent technician who works here. And I'm the only one that works here. I've seen squires that are better than some fenders I've seen. And then I've also seen squires that are complete garbage. And this one was garbage. But, you know, I'm working on it. So it'll be better. Uh, uh, the nut is the heart of the guitar. Uh, and then the heart shifts to a different position when you play the strings on the frets, right? So then that becomes the heart. But you can't have a, a bad nut on a guitar. Um, so here, the sneaky bastards at Squire uh, just took a nut from, you know, an injection molded pre-slotted nut from, well, you know, made for a right-handed guitar, flipped it around, didn't even bother filing the string slots and just sold it. It would have been okay to take a pre-slotted writing nut as long as they filed it then, but they didn't do any of that. Uh, so now, if you think about it, the string should be vibrating from, from the front of the nut. That's the takeoff point, right? And because of the way the nut was installed, it's actually vibrated, vibrating from the back of the nut, which makes the string longer, which extends the scale length. But the frets, the fret positions are uh, indexed from the front of the nut. So you can't possibly dial in the correct intonation by adjusting the saddles. Um, so uh, if this guitar is for ear training, Forget about it. You really can't buy a cheap guitar for a beginner, by the way. I'm going to make a whole separate video about that. Um, all right. So, so that's the uh, intonation issue. The other issue is uh, obviously the string buzz inside of the string slot because the string is just hitting the two sides of the string slot, right, as it's vibrating. So that, all right. So I hope you learn something new. Uh, I hope to see you soon. If you want to support this work, there's ways to do it. You can uh, take a link from this video showing up somewhere above and then use this link in a guitar forum. And that way you attract other viewers to this channel and you also share the information with the community, right? So it's a win-win. Um, you can also click a link below that says, buy me a coffee. Oh, where's my coffee? Yes, see, I need a coffee. Um, and, you know, there's some other links. You can buy Guitar Quackery merch. You can even buy a guitar mat, like a repair mat with the Guitar Quackery logo. And that's that. There's some Patreon links you should check out. You can always subscribe, give it a like, and I think I've done enough talking. So <laughs> good night, and let's talk soon.